What's up Neon Nation, welcome back for some more Cyberpunk 2077. Today we have another Cyberpunk 2077 analysis video and a follow up to something we've done in the past with another 7 things you missed from the gameplay demo. I know we haven't had a lot of content to work with, but believe it or not I'm still going through and watching what we have so far on a regular basis just in case I notice any more peculiar details. Here are some of those intriguing details I think you guys will enjoy. Number 1 is an easter egg of sorts in the scavenger lair. As a firefight erupts and we take refuge behind one of the barricades to heal up, we see some notes posted on the side of the wall we are crouched next to. If we flip the area and zoom a little bit, we see this handwritten note a little bit more clearly. On this note, we see a quote that speaks to CD Projekt Red's philosophy for the narrative and the story of cyberpunk. It reads, Friends will help you ease the pain, but at the end of the day, you have all the control of your life. This kind of runs parallel with the philosophy of cyberpunk in that there's no saving the world, just yourself. Next we have something we've pointed out before. Remember Sasha Devon, the cyborg with three mouths that we speculated was a sex robot of some sort, maybe working a red light district and was famous? Well it seems like the Sasha Devon experience is an experience after all, but a brain dance one. We can speculate this because it has a BD logo on the bottom right hand corner. Now there are some other ads that we've seen that have this BD logo and to be honest I'm surprised I missed it so I think I might have to go back to my ripper doc and replace this faulty mark 1 that he gave me. Next we have some details about the mantis blade schematic in the ripper doc clinic. Mantis blades are those arm sights that seem to be a favorite of cyber psychos in night city. Now we've all seen how discreet these blades are due to them popping out of the forearms but if you look closely it's pretty easy to tell that someone has them based on the carved out patterns on their skin. As we zoom into the schematic however, it shows just the alloy and the steel of the blades. This is where we see the military grade real skin technology option that helps you disguise your cybernetics. In fact, the scavenger boss uses real skin to cover his face plating according to this frame by frame series episode. Real skin is the most expensive kind of covering option and is a flexible plastic that looks like skin with follicles, hairs, small scars and imperfections and has a 75% chance of passing as a meat limb to all but the closest of inspections. Chroming of the limbs is the cheapest option of covering and can be used to tint your cyber limbs with silvers, golds and other colors which isn't the most useful if you want to be discreet. Next we have insight into some of the cyberware we see when Sandra Dorset is having her virus shard extracted by V, Jackie and T-Bug. In the biomonitor panel we see a cyberware device known as an internal med pump. This is a device which disperses meds upon distress or anything vital to the user no matter how dire the situation. The closest equivalent from the lore seems to be any of these automatics or auto docs and can carry a variety of different drugs and options inside of them. Basic automatics carry 3 drugs whilst advanced ones carry 5. Now this isn't confirmed to be the equivalent and the internal pump could be a new device for 2077 but the research I've done doesn't show any device with exactly that name. We also see the unit AMV-10 being dispatched to retrieve her which seems to be an upgraded model from the AMV-4 we're used to seeing from the tabletop sourcebook when it comes to the trauma team. Next we have the appearance of contacts similar to the GTA series. After Dexter Deshawn gives us our briefing and our mission objectives, we see Militech agent Meredith Stout via the projection and a contact added screen pops up. We see later on in the demo, we have the ability to call up Stout and plan the meeting and later still there's a menu where we have a social or contacts added area. It seems we can add contacts directly through shards and contacts and phone numbers will play a big part of the game. At the point in the story where the demo takes place, we'd most likely have Jackie, T-Bug, Victor, Deshaun, Meredith and others on speed dial. I'm not sure if we will have gangs as contacts but I don't really see why not. This gives us the possibility that everyone that can be interacted with in the demo can be called on the fly, again similar to the GTA series. Next we have Jackie and some of his jewelry. We can see he likes gold from his kitted out gold pistols to his bracelets and necklaces but upon further inspection we see that one of his necklaces is actually a cross. Now religion in the world of cyberpunk has fallen to the wayside somewhat and fringe religions have gained in popularity whilst many of the bigger religions have taken steps back. Atheism is popular as people turn their backs on religion in the pursuit of accelerated science and cybernetics. Jackie not only has a cross on his necklace 
but on his pants and as a tattoo, so it will be interesting to see what role this plays, if at all. It has to mean something though, because for Jackie, it's very pronounced. Finally, we have some graffiti you guys may have missed. Now, graffiti is all over the place, especially in the halls of the scav layer and outside and inside the Maelstrom bunker, but there was definitely some classic humor in this particular section of the demo, where we radio into the Maelstrom from outside the All Foods warehouse. As you can see, we're assaulted by every cuss word in the book and words and phrases we still laugh at today because we're immature idiots. Well, at least I am. Thanks for watching, guys, and for everything and anything Cyberpunk 2077, make sure you follow the Neon Arcade.